Hello chess fans, this is Rick from chess to impress with a video on the first computer chess game ever played. The story starts with Alan Turing, an English mathematician, computer pioneer and one of the godfathers of artificial intelligence. He was also one of the brightest brains behind the Enigma project in the Second World War, where Turing and his team were able to break the German codes and chess was an important part of the Enigma team. Three chess masters were members of that team, Alexander Gollenbeck and Milner Barr. And then after the war in 1948, Turing wrote a chess playing algorithm, but he did not have the hardware to run it on. So when using his algorithm, which he called TuroChamp, he had with pen and paper, perform the calculations on his algorithm to find out what chess move the algorithm wanted to play. The first game Turing played with his algorithm has not been preserved, but the second one has. It was a game Turing played with White against a colleague of the University of Manchester, Alec Glenny. And we're going to have a look at that game, the first computer chess game played in 1952. Turing Champ opened with e4, e5 from Alec Glenny, so a player of flesh and blood. Knight c3, knight f6, and we have a Vienna game. Here f4 or bishop c4 are the main moves, but Turochamp played d4. Bishop b4, pinning the knight, which means that now the e4 pawn is unprotected. This knight is no longer covering that pawn because of the pin. But knight f3 was played and black decided not to take on e4, which is possible here. It's a good move, but black played d6 instead. Bishop d2 from Alan Turing with Turochamp, knight c6, d5, knight d4, and now look at this move, h4, yes we call that a shot in the dark. Bishop g4, and now on the other side of the board a similar shot, a4. And I'm not making fun of it, it's quite amazing that Turing was able to write a chess program. He was a real genius. Knight takes f3 check. G takes, and the bishop drop back to h5, and Turing gives a check. c6 to shield the check, d takes c6, and now black cannot take back, because bishop takes c6 check is a fork. That wins material for white. So after d takes c6, Glenny castled. c takes b7, hitting the rook, rook stepped aside, and bishop a6. To keep that pawn protected. Queen a5 hitting the bishop on a6 and queen e2 protecting that bishop and knight d7. Rook g1 on the half open file and knight c5 attacking the b pawn a second time and also attacking the bishop a second time. Turo Champ plays an in-between move rook g5 hitting the bishop on h5. That bishop dropped back and now Bishop c4 is a very nice move on the diagonal. For example, you cannot take that pawn because then after h5, white wins material. You cannot play h6 because that bishop gets taken anyway. The f pawn is pinned. The bishop is really nice on c4. But Turing went not to c4, he went to b5. Now the pawn can be taken and h5 is now less strong because black still has h6, hitting the rook, and rook takes g6 is now not possible because the f pawn is not pinned and the bishop will be able to hide on h7. So after knight takes b7, Turing castled queenside. Knight back to c5, and here knight d5 is a strong move according to today's engine, but bishop c6 was played by Turo Champ. And it's not as strong. Rook fc8 hitting the bishop. Bishop d5 now on that very nice diagonal. And here knight takes a4 is a good move according to today's engine. King h8 is good as well to unpin the f pawn and solve the problem with the bishop on g6. But black decided to take on c3. Bishop takes hitting the queen and the queen took on a4. And now look at this move from Terror Champ. He played, not a move I would think of straight away, he played king d2 and it's not even a bad move. He is avoiding a check, maybe in the algorithm there was 
a feature built in to try and avoid checks. Instead, h5 wins material for white. h6 does no, not work as we saw before because of rook takes g6 and the f pawn is pinned. But king d2 was played. Knight e6. Hit in the rook. Rook drop back. And here, black has a very nice shot with rook takes b2. Because you cannot take that rook because of rook takes c2 check, winning the queen. But after rook g4, black played knight d4 instead. Hit in the queen. Queen went to d3. Knight back to b5. Bishop back to b3, hit in the black queen. Queen drop back to a6. Bishop c4. Bishop h5, hitting the rook. And the rook went to g3. Not the most active square for this rook. But that's what Turochan played. Queen a4. The bishop took on b5. The queen took back. And so far Turochan has played a very tidy game of chess. And here after queen takes b5, rook takes b5, the game goes on. But very strange and very uncharacteristic having seen the play so far. Turochan blunders. He grabs a pawn on d6. And do you see the refutation? You can put the video on pause, it's quite easy. There is a skewer, rook d8, and the queen cannot play because of the pin. Black is going to win the queen for a rook, and Alan Turing resigned the game here on behalf of Turing Champ. As mentioned, Turing had written the software, but there was no hardware available, so Turing played this game with pen and paper, calculating each move using his algorithm. And quite amazing what a proper game of chess this algorithm could play. Fast forward to 2012 when the 13th world champion Gary Kasparov played Turochamp. Turochamp had been reconstructed based on the notes that Alan Turing left behind. And at a scientific congress Kasparov played Turochamp who played at a two-ply level which was the original invention of Turing. And as we just saw Turing's program could play a decent game of chess, but in 2012, the program played much weaker. Let's have a look what happened. e3 instead of e4, as Turochan played in 1952. Knight f6 from Kasparov, knight c3, d5. Knight h3, Kasparov commented here that this was not the best move. e5 grabbing the center. Queen f3, knight c6, and look at this move. Bishop d3, Turochamp did not make this type of move in 1952, but it did in the reconstructed version of 2012. It just blunders a piece after e4 with a fork. Bishop takes, d takes, knight takes, at least he get two pawns for the piece. Bishop e7 developing, knight back to g3. Kasparov castled, so did Turochamp. Bishop g4, hitting the queen. Queen went to f4 and bishop d6. Again hitting the queen. The queen went to safety and Kasparov took on h3. G takes and queen d7 hitting that pawn on h3. And Turochamp is going to save his pawn by playing it up. The queen goes to h3 very close to black's king. b3 doesn't solve white's problems but he was already in big trouble. Knight g4. And now look at this move, rook e1, allowing a mate in two. Queen takes, very similar to how Magnus Carlsen checkmated Bill Gates. I'm sure you know that game. If you don't, you can find it on YouTube. King f1, and this was checkmate. The game lasted less than half a minute. Kasparov said in an interview afterwards that this was the two-ply version. Two-ply means that the algorithm was only looking at two moves, one for white, one for black. There's also a five-ply version, and Kasparov said that many amateur players would have trouble beating that version of the algorithm. Computer engines have come a long way since then, but this is how it all started. And this is our game, myself against the chess to impress viewers. Let's put the position, the current position on the board. I have just played bishop e2, and it is your turn. If you have not voted your move yet, please put it in the description box of this video and you will be in the raffle. At the end of the game, I will raffle a book amongst the viewers who have taken part in this game. So your sixth move after my move, bishop f1 to e2, what would you play here? 
I will announce your move in this Sunday's video, which will be viewers game number 100 and have a very special one lined up for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.